Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Capablanca Saga. Now, as you know, uh, for the past couple of videos during the Capablanca Saga, I didn't know which direction we're gonna take, uh, whether we're gonna check up on uh, a couple more tournaments or do we go straight into the match with Lasker. Now, I actually thought about skipping the 1918 tournament of New York and going uh, uh, into the match against Serbian Grandmaster Borislav Kostic in 1919 uh, in, in Cuba. Uh, uh, Cuba, uh, Havana, but uh, then I decided that we really need to check out the 1918 uh, tournament in New York, then go to the match with Kostic and only then go into the uh, World Chess Championship match with Emmanuel Lasker. Now, uh, this is a, actually a game from round three. Uh, I decided to skip a game uh, from round two. It's a game Capablanca played against uh, Roy Turnbull Black. It was a very nice drawn game, uh, but not a lot going on, so I decided to skip it. But game one, we already did game one from this tournament. Uh, a year ago on this channel, it's Capablanca's famous game against Frank, J Frank James Marshall, where Frank James Marshall unleashes the Marshall attack for the first time. So if you haven't seen this game, the first uh, thing you will see in the description below will be a link to this game, uh, Capablanca vs. Marshall. So do check it out. If you don't check it out, you're not uh, gonna uh, be following up uh, uh, on your vast knowledge uh, in the proper way with this uh, New York tournament of 1918. So uh, even feel free to pause the video now and watch that video and only then return to this video because this is a game from round three. Uh, in this game Capablanca faces John Stuart Morrison and uh, he's a very strong player, he's a, a Canadian champion, five-time Canadian champion and uh, he participated in three tournaments that uh, Capablanca also participated in. in. Interestingly Capablanca won all three. Uh, but uh, we also do have a nice photo from this tournament, there you have it. Uh, I did uh, some checking up and although it's hard to make out a lot as it's not a great quality photo, uh, I managed to uh, uh, deduce uh, which uh, round it was from. It's from round 11 actually. Uh, on the board one you can see that um, uh, Capablanca with the black pieces faces Oscar Haas, uh, his opponent from the previous round, if you remember, he lost in the Rice Memorial Tournament uh, in 1916 to him, and then we mentioned that Capablanca will go on his legendary streak. Then behind them you can see uh, there uh, Janowski faces Frank James Marshall, Marshall with the black pieces, and in the uh, far away in the back, uh, Morrison Capablanca's opponent from this game uh, faces Serbian Grandmaster Borislav Kostic. Uh, so I do hope you enjoyed that. Now let's check out the game. Like we said, it's a game from round three and Capablanca opens with d4. Uh, we have d5 and knight to f3. Uh, I just, uh, before checking the game, I would just like to show you a, a neat little trick uh, that Capablanca even mentions himself in, in the book. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, in the book uh, uh, Chess Fundamentals. And uh, I've actually... Uh, witnessed this happen uh, over the board uh, when we were uh, playing um, uh, in, in our uh, Croatian Club Championship. Uh, if you remember Dodo the Engine Boy from, from my stream, uh, he actually got this position with the black pieces. e6, knight c3, knight f6, and now if white goes bishop to g5, knight bd7, uh, now white actually can go for, okay, c captures on d5, pawn captures, but then white blundered with knight captures on d5. And it's hard to know that this is a blunder if you don't know it or if you don't, uh, or if you're not, well, if you're a beginner, this might come to you as a surprise, uh, but black can actually temporarily give up the queen here with knight captures. Now after white captures the queen, bishop to b4 check, uh, and uh, the, uh, white has no defense. He has to uh, block the, the check with the queen, bishop captures, king captures, and now after king captures here, if you count the pieces, you will see that uh, black has three minor pieces, white has uh, only only two minor pieces. So it's a winning game for black. Uh, but it's very interesting that uh, such a thing can occur. I mean, when I was reading Capablanca's Chess Fundamentals, I, I found this very, uh, well, very enjoyable. So I do hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, but getting back to this game, Capablanca continues with knight to f3, we have knight to f6, now c4 and d6, we are back at the uh, queen, queen's gambit declined. Uh, bishop to g5, we have bishop to e7, now comes knight to c3, and here, uh, well, you might go for something like knight bd7, but here uh, Morrison goes for c5 immediately, and uh, it's not a mistake or anything, it's uh, it's a perfectly playable move, but uh, I don't know, if you, if you consider chess principles, then uh, c5 is usually played, in, for example, in the queen's gambit decline when white develops the bishop to f4. Uh, because when the bishop is on g5, uh, the bishop actively fights for the center as it it attacks one of the defenders of the central pawn. So c5 usually uh, uh, best idea when, when the bishop is on f4, but uh, I guess it, it's also playable here. 
Uh, but okay, D captures on C5 by Capablanca. Now black will have to waste a move as he already developed the bishop with the bishop to E7. Uh, but Morrison goes for queen to A5. He now threatens to win back uh, the pawn this way. Uh, but he's not actually going for the pawn. He's just uh, pinning the knight here. Uh, also, uh, there are some uh, nice ideas. Uh, the knight is pinned. Maybe if this knight moves, you can also play d4, maybe trap the knight. Uh, but it, it's a very active play from black's perspective. Uh, C captures on d5 by Capablanca. E captures and now comes e3. Just preventing any sneaky ideas from black, preparing to develop the bishop. Bishop to b5 is the idea. Uh, with knight to c6, rook to c1 by Capablanca, and now castles by Morrison, and bishop to b5. Uh, here Capablanca is actually preparing queen to a4. He's currently up a pawn and uh, black decides not to recapture his pawn because if he recaptures bishop captures here, uh, he no longer defends the, the knight here. Capablanca would gladly capture here and after pawn captures even grab this uh, d5 pawn. So black would be in, in big trouble here. Uh, so first with bishop to g4 by Morrison and now queen to a4. And here black has to react to this. If you don't react to queen a4, uh, let's say you try something like h6. Uh, again, you would get bishop captures. And now, uh, let's say queen captures first, bishop captures, bishop captures on f6. You no longer defend the c5, uh, attack the c5 pawn with your bishop, just knight captures on d5. Bishop captures on b2, now rook c2, you don't want to allow bishop to c3 check. Uh, bishop captures, pawn captures, and after bishop here, um, white would be up a pawn, and it it would be a positionally winning game for white, just king e2, you can go rook b1, the b7 pawn is very weak, and in the long run, Capablanca would win this. Uh, so, after queen a4 by Capablanca, uh, Morrison captures it. Queen captures with uh, knight captures on a4 now, uh, further defending the pawn here, preparing b4. Uh, bishop captures on f3, giving up the bishop pair, but messing up white's pawn structure. B pawn captures on, G on f3, and now uh, knight to e5, going after the f3 pawn. Uh, we have king to e2, Capablanca defends it, and now rook a to c8. Uh, and b4 by Capablanca, cementing that pawn on c5. And if you look at this position, what uh, does black have to show for his uh, uh, lack of a pawn? Uh, not all that much. Uh, but okay, b6, and here Capablanca finds a very nice move, f4. First he forces black to decide what to do with the knight, and there isn't all that much you can do with the knight. Uh, for example, if knight here just captures and you lose a piece, the bishop on e7 is unguarded. So, uh, with knight to g6, and only now Capablanca proceeds with pawn captures on b6. Uh, with bishop captures on b4 first, a captures on b was probably, probably a little bit better, uh, but okay, bishop captures on b4 with bishop captures on f6, opening up the g file, very important. Uh, pawn captures and now b captures on a7 by Capablanca. Rook to a8, uh, hoping to, to win this pawn here. Uh, and now a nice uh, in-between move by Capablanca, rook h to g1. Now you can see that the f4 move was... Uh, very handy, f5 is coming, and even though a f5 is a, a threat of winning the knight, <clears throat> there really isn't a good way uh, of preventing this. Uh, black did defend with king to h8, he did not allow the knight to be trapped, uh, but just rook captures on a7 is, is, a, is a much sturdier defense, even though black is lost to whatever, whatever black plays. Uh, but uh, Morrison didn't want to give up his knight, he played king to h8, and now we have rook to c7, with a pretty simple idea, the pawn is defended, you want to play bishop to c6, kick away the rook, play pawn to a8, queen the pawn, and black would have to give up rook for a bishop, and Capablanca would have a winning game. Uh, so, uh, with bishop to a5, attacking the rook, and also not allowing knight to b6. Uh, rook to b7, and now comes rook f to c8, but now... Uh, Capablanca plays bishop to d3. Uh, he doesn't want to allow any counterplay with rook to c2, so he just blocks it. But also here, Capablanca misses a very nice opportunity to be to be funny, because he, he also could have blocked it with bishop to c6. Uh, it's a very nice idea, uh, because if, if uh, rook captures here, you just go rook b8 to check. And of course, black will not capture, black will block with the rook, but now rook b1. And now again, you're threatening rook captures here, and there's not all that much uh, you can do. Or even even without this, you can first capture, capture, and then go rook b1, even, even simpler. Again, threatening rook to b8. Black doesn't really have a good response to this. If, if bishop to c7, 
rook to c1 and that's pretty much it if king g7 just rook captures on c7 and it's all over uh, if you capture then pawn a8 is a queen if rook to a8 uh, just knight b6 and it's all over rook has to move you will win the rook with a8 or just captures captures with a completely winning end game so bishop to d3 capablanca goes for the simplest idea but bishop to c6 was uh, also a very nice funny move uh, but okay uh, knight to f8 uh, morrison prepares to uh, well reintroduce this knight into the game uh, rook g to b1 now preparing rook to b8 as the knight is now a target uh, on the last rank king to g7 defending the knight and now just rook to b5 attacking the bishop here uh, rook to c7 saying if you win my bishop i'm going to take your rook uh, but just rook captures capablanca again keeps it simple uh, bishop captures on c7 and now rook to b7 uh, just attacking that bishop bishop to a5 and now comes f5 just uh, you know improving the position as black doesn't have all that many active moves we have h5 by black and now h4 king to h6 uh giving up the f7 pawn but it's really interesting if you look at this position sort of a tsuk swung not not really uh, a perfect tsuk swung but uh black doesn't really have a good move you can't move the bishop any move with the bishop will capture it you could go bishop here but that's not really a move the bishop isn't doing anything there uh white can just go bishop c2 bishop b3 win the d5 pawn and then start pushing his pawns and from d5 the, the bishop and the rook will pile up on the f7 pawn so that's not really an option the knight nowhere to go you can go knight h7 but the knight from h7 doesn't have a good square uh the rook cannot move if the rook moves then rook b8 wins so not not any not a lot of moves i mean there are moves you can go knight h7 but it's not doing anything so it can it is a tsuk swung uh but king h6 was played giving up the f7 pawn capablanca said okay thank you sir uh and here i guess we have another example where black just didn't want to resign prior to move 30 so it couldn't be categorized uh, as a miniature i guess as there is really no counterplay here from black's perspective uh d4 was played uh maybe trying to mess up white spawn structure but capablanca just went bishop to e4 which was the initial idea just trying to kick away the rook from there uh we have d3 check king captures and it was in this position that uh john stewart morrison resigned the game uh on, on move 32 beca because he could have easily resigned on move 29 for example uh but yeah now you have to move the rook and then pawn queens you have to give up the rook or you capture capture and there's no counterplay here white is just up a piece completely winning even with the past a pawn it will be much quicker uh so yeah uh that's uh, it after king captures morrison resigned the game and an excellent victory for capablanca so he defeated marshall in the uh well epic game in round one then a draw with roy, roy turnbull black in round two and then an excellent victory against john stewart morrison in round three so we are continuing with this tournament it was supposed to be an uh, eight player event but then one player got sick uh canceled at the last time and then turned into a seven player event and it's always a problem when you have a seven player event uh, one player will always have to uh chill ev uh, every day because well he, he will not have an opponent but i guess he can just you know walk around and, and enjoy the position uh yeah i believe in this photo that we've seen uh the person not having an opponent in this round is roy turnbull black as he is not present uh, amongst uh, those playing so he could be one of the people uh, you know uh, watching them but i i can't spot him it's it's simply too poor uh, of a quality photo uh but yeah uh, that's the game i do hope you enjoyed it and i do hope you enjoyed the uh this uh direction i've taken the capablanca saga and so first we're gonna check this uh new york 1918 tournament as i feel it will be uh, a nice introduction to the match against borislav kostic in 1919 and then we are heading into the world chess championship match uh capablanca versus emmanuel lasker so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Tan, uh, Tan Nugent, uh, Carlos Salinas, uh, Steven Penning, uh, Gary Buckstad, and uh, Roman Finta for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with some more interesting content, continuing the Capablanca saga, and of course, checking up on your suggestions. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon. Have an excellent rest of your Monday.